Hi, this is Mike Vitrano along with my co-host, Michael Torrio. Welcome to another episode of Mike and Mike. We, uh, today's guest is the pride of Wyoming Valley West, the pride of Present Valley, the pride of Northampton. He's the old times wind leader at Drexel, and he's the current assistant coach at Binghamton University. How are you, Steve? Doing great. How about yourself? Doing great. So, Steve, obviously, there's a number of things I want to talk to you about. Obviously, Binghamton, I want to talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, your son had recently won a, a Tulsa title. So I want to talk to you about, you know, what it's like to be, uh, obviously, an elite athlete, a coach, and how that translates to being a dad. And I also want to talk to you about um, kind of the, your, your process in high school. I think you were at three different high schools, and real well, you ended up at the number one high school, public school in the country in Northampton. But first, why don't you start? Tell us what's going on at Binghamton. I know they had a big win over Army, a big win over Ryder. Give us a once over. Yeah, so, you know, um, you know the train's rolling right now. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of young guys, uh, a lot of seasoned vets, you know, like Lou Dupre and, and Zach Trampe, who, who wrestled great, uh, you know, so far this year. Um, you know, we have two top 25 wins. Uh, so hopefully – you know, some of the the uh, the ranking guys will, will start to notice that and, and kind of start sliding us up in there. Um, I know one of our big uh, advocates is, uh, you know, Billy Baldwin. And, uh, you know, he's all over Twitter and Instagram, you know, really uh, putting it out there, letting them know that, you know, we're, we're on the come up right now. Absolutely. You know, you were at <clears throat> obviously a number of schools. Um, what, 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 you know, you started the, you started the, uh, a program in, in, in Keystone. You had a number of division one schools. How has that prepared you for Binghamton? I think that, you know, not, you, you've kind of stepped up along the way. How has it prepared you to be a current role at Binghamton? Yeah. You know, I, I've been very fortunate, you know, through my career, you know, as an athlete to be around, you know, some great coaches, you know, Jack Childs, um, I'm never late and that's, that's a huge thanks to him. And that goes far in life. And, you know, being around, you know, John Stutzman when I was at Bloom, um, you know, he, he's kind of a hard nosed gritty guy, um, you know, moving on to Lehigh, you know, with Pat Santoro and Buxton and Brad Dillon and, and, you know, the Hughes brothers and, and coach Gordon recently at Bloom and now at Binghamton, you know, with, uh, you know, with Kyle Borshoff and Freddie Garcia, you know, we just gelled right from the get-go. Um, Kyle and I actually, you know, wrestled against, not physically against each other, but American and Drexel always competed. Um, so I actually wrestled Kyle's brother at NCAAs once and, and in dual meets. So, um, you know, we were familiar with, with each other kind of right from the beginning and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's great. You know, it, it's, we're thinking the same things, you know, when we're, we're talking and, you know, before practice, what guys need to work on, um, you know, we're just, seems like we're always on the same page. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Speak about Binghamton a little bit and, um, you know, what, what a student athlete can expect as far as the education that they're going to get there. Uh, the admissions process to get in, what kind of uh, grades that they have. I mean, it's our understanding, you know, here on the in New York that you know it's a it's the Harvard of the uh, of the state university uh, system. Yep. Um, you know, so speak a little bit about what type of recruits you guys look for, what they need to be able to do to get in, and then um, kind of what they're doing once they graduate. Yeah, you know, it's it's Binghamton is you know one tiny tier below Ivy League, really. You know. Um, you definitely have to have the academics to get in, um, and, and as well as, you know, the athletic part, you know, but that kind of takes care of itself at the D1 level. Um, you know, right now is very interesting time. Uh, we're in an NCAA dead period. Uh, so we can really only contact student athletes, you know, by Zoom, uh, phone calls. Uh, we can have no face-to-face -face interaction, um, you know, I cannot go visit them. I can't go to a match. I can't go to a practice. They can't uh, come visit our school. Uh, so we're doing a lot of virtual tours and, um, you know, just trying to get to know, you know, the student athlete themselves, you know, where our connections are pretty well rooted, you know, well, obviously through Pennsylvania with me and, and, and Fred Garcia and then, you know, Borshoff, you know, in New York, being a New York guy, um, and, and my many connections, you know, through New York and, and honestly, you know, Mike has, has been a great, a great attribute too to know and Dave Baumgartner and, you know, just, you know, you make those networks and Vogar and, you know, I, I'm, I'm friendly with all those guys and, 
um, you know, it, it's really about networking. Um, you know, Binghamton, you graduate with that Binghamton degree, you're going to go places. You know, we, we have guys that are doing very, very well, uh, donating back to the program, super supportive, um, you know, and, and, you know, it takes a village to be successful. And I feel like Binghamton right now is really coming full circle on, on all aspects uh, of the program. Yeah. So, go ahead, Mike. So I wanted to ask you two questions and then I know that Mike wanted to talk about, you know, um, you know, kind of the youth level, but, you know, one, one topic to follow up with, um, with Binghamton is, you know, I'm, I'm about 40 years old. Um, you know, I've been wrestling for, you know, since I've been about four years old, a long time. I'm very familiar with what's gone on. Binghamton has gone through kind of an up and down period where, um, you know, there was no drinking policy, so on and so forth. Um, what type of, um, you know, restrictions, if any, are still on the program as far as the student, um, student athlete lifestyle and ac activities and such? Um, you know, I don't know if there's any type of restrictions on the program, but, you know, from a, a coaching staff point of view, you know, we're, you know, we're a no nonsense, you know, type, type of group of guys. I mean, we want guys that are committed um, you know, to getting better, doing the right things socially, you know, training the right way, having the right mindsets and the, and, and the right goals. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, the group of guys we have right now, they're young and our seasoned vets, you know, like Lou Dupre, I mean, and, and Zach Tramp, I mean, those guys are leaders, you know, they're busting their tail in the room. They're doing the extra. We're doing private let well individuals, I guess you could call them at that level. Um, you know, we're we're doing all the extra right now, and these young guys are starting to to really catch on, and 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 they're being molded the proper way right from the get go. And uh, I, I think that's that's why it's showing on the mat right now. I mean, our one twenty five pounder, true freshman, um, you know, had a huge win over a ranked kid against Ryder. We go into the Army match. He gets cradled for six right off the bat. You know, any true freshman, you get cradled for six off the bat. The odds of you grinding your way back into that match against an Army kid who is a grinder is, is very, very almost near impossible. And uh, he just kept wrestling, grinding it out, took it into overtime, got to the legs, got that takedown. It was, it was a very uh, huge momentum changer right there, right from the get-go, you know, as a program. And then everyone else who took the mat, you know, just wrestled their tail off and, and, it, and it really showed. So, um, you know, I, I just think we're doing the right things right now as a program, socially, training, the, the whole way through for sure. Coach, you talk about a program. I, I want to kind of peel back with you, uh, your, your high school and prep career. You know, I kidded around with you at, in the intro <laughs> that you were at, you were at three different high schools and, you know, I, yeah. it clearly did work out. If you ended up at Northampton, they were the number one uh, public high school in the country, but, you know, talk about to the athlete, a parent that's kind of thinking about, you know, go, you know, transferring or moving. What, what was that like? And, you know, ha looking back, how do you think that turned out for you? You know, I, I was a little different, you know, I just loved to wrestle. You know, I was the guy who would go when I was a cadet, you know, I'd wrestle cadet and junior, 125, 130. I'd leave there with 30 matches in one day. You know, some people thought it was crazy, but I just loved it. You know, I, I just loved the wrestle. Um, and I kind of knew where I wanted to be. You know, I knew what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I, I needed to get myself around high-level guys. You know, at, at Valley West where I was, you know, my dad was my coach the whole way through. Um you know, I wouldn't be where I am without him, no doubt about it, you know, but he got me to a point, you know, and then it was time to pass the off, you know, and, and, um, you know, we, we moved, you know, from Valley West to Pleasant Valley. Um, I think, I think I took eighth in the state that year at Pleasant Valley. And then, um, you know, I, I just, I wasn't in a good situation. Uh, you know, some of the people around me at the time were, into some extracurricular activities that, you know, I just, I knew I didn't belong there. And, uh, you know, I was just honest with my parents. I said, Hey, you know, let's, let's make the move to Northampton. Let, let's just go get it done in the Lehigh Valley. And 
Um, you know, they were on board, you know, they sacrificed, uh, you know, they sold their house and we moved into an apartment there and, uh, you know, it, it was interesting for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, it, those are memories I'll, I'll never forget, you know, wrestling Easton in Liberty's gym with, you know, 6,000 people and the floor is packed. There's nowhere to sit, nowhere to stand. And, um, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, I, I would wish everyone could um, be a part of because it was, uh, it was really amazing for sure. <laughs> you want the best of high school wrestling? Long Island Wrestling Association's website brings you the best. Wrestling is one of the toughest blue collar sports. The sport has tens of thousands of followers and at the center of it all is the Long Island Wrestling Association, measuring the gravity of the sport. In 2002, National Hall of Fame wrestling inductee Steve Meehan created the number one source for wrestling news in New York State. With contributors like Long Island Sports Hall of Fame inductee and historian Andy Slauson, the site is the most comprehensive wrestling website in the country for high school wrestling news. With in-depth analysis, entertaining facts, forums, and trending topics, this site has a treasure trove of historic high school wrestling information with records dating back to the 1930s. There is no better source for high school wrestling coverage. Long Island Wrestling Association, keeping the wrestling world up to speed. off your, your resume but it's it's impressive um very very impressive um and so with where you're at now where is steve minich in, in in five years where is he in in 10 years you know a lot is going on in the combative art world with wrestling blending into jiu-jitsu and mixed martial yeah. arts the youth scene is obviously um exploding and there's all sorts of opportunities to uh for wrestling coaches to make a a, a real life at it, you know, um, obviously you're not leaving uh, Binghamton. The focus is to, to get as many of those 10 guys onto the top of the podium at the end of the year. Uh, no one's asking you to, to not do that. But if you were to daydream <laughs> or talk about five, 10 years, where, where, where do you think that um, we see it? Yeah, you know, I got to be honest. You know, my, my wife always says every two years you're on the move and it, it's been pretty consistent. But, uh, you know, I, I could say for the first time, I am like at peace right now with everything, you know, Binghamton's phenomenal. Um, you know, I, I'm in a, a great position there and, and around great people, uh, especially with Kyle and I being the same age. Um, you know, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're a little bit of a duo, you know what I mean? So, um, I think that, uh, with my son also right now, uh, my dad's actually the uh, the public school here, Wyoming area. He's the head coach, uh, the high school program. So, um, you know, I know that by the time my son gets up there, that program will be resurrected and, and built the way that that programs really should be from the bottom up. Um, and, and then also at my son's club, um, you know, they're, we're rocking it right now. I mean, we have – probably 10 Tulsa place winners, uh, two kids, um, you know, one, won the Tulsa nationals and, uh, I see the Eagle know, in the background there. I see the Eagle in the background. Yeah. There. You like that? Yeah. I do like that. Yeah. I'm waiting for it to start flying around, but, uh, <laughs> you know, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's the great situation right now. You know, my wife's happy. I'm happy. My, my kids are happy. Uh, my parents only live, you know, four blocks away, you know, so it's always nice if we, you know, need a night out or a babysitter. So um, I'm, I'm not in a big hurry to uh, to make any big moves right now. I'm uh, super uh, happy where I'm at right now, for sure. 
Coach, you talked about the Mad Assassins wrestling. One of the things I wanted to cover, look, you were placed in, in Fargo a number of times. You were four-time NCAA Division One qualifier. You're the all-time wins leader at Drexel, the Drexel Dragons. You placed in the World Team Trials. You placed in the US Open. If I'm not mistaken, you had a, a win over a, a senior world champion, uh, I think from Japan. Um, you know, your success, obviously, and also uh, at a Division One coach, right? So you're, you had a lot of success as an athlete. You're a Division One coach. That doesn't always translate to the youth level, right? You know, not right. Your, your son, Stevie J, who I've known since he was probably zero, right? He's obviously <laughs> getting better and better and better. And, you know, h- how is what you've done as an athlete and a coach prepared you? And then to follow that up, what advice would you give someone else in your shoes? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, uh, I've learned a lot through my career of what not to do. You know, I, I made some mistakes. Um, you know, some bad weight cuts, uh, you know, taking the easy way a little bit. Um, and uh, I think that's kind of why a lot of times, you know, I couldn't win the big match. You know what I mean? I couldn't win the, you know, the match to, to be on the world team, you know, one match short, you know, round of 12, one match short, you know, state semis, one match short, you know, so I, I was always a little short, but at the same time, that's kind of what drove me through my, my whole career. Um, and, and that's kind of where I'm at right now with, um, I know I'm done competing. I'm at peace with it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to help kids, um, at, at, at Binghamton, the, the lightweights, I'm trying to help them, you know, whatever they need, I'm there for them. Um, it, it's not about me anymore. That, that selfishness is, is kind of, you know, kicked to the side. Um, you know, and, and now looking at it, you know, at, at the youth level, um, a lot of people focus on the wins and losses, you know, obviously people want to win and, and, and winning fixes a lot of problems. Right. But if you're winning, that doesn't mean that you're taking all those proper steps to, for the big picture, you know? So I focus on more things like scoring as many points as you can in a match. If my kid goes out there and loses 13 to 12 and he puts 12 points up on the board, that's awesome. <laughs> and I'll tell him that, you know, I, I get excited when he's out there, you know, racking points up, hitting tilts. You know, you could go out there and, and go zero, zero. And, and, you know, it's one, one, one for these little kids. It, it's, it's near impossible sometimes when two top level kids are out there. But, you know, I want him to go out there and attack. You know, I'm not, I'm not worried about, you know, are we going to win one nothing on, on, a, on, a, on a stalling, you know, go out there and attack. And, and, and I think, uh, you know, the, the head coach at the club is Van Dobish. Um, you know, he, know ran, Van. Yep. Yep. he ran dark nights, you know, he coached Sammy Sasso and Julian Klebo. And, 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 you know, that mentality is why those guys are so good. You know, they just want to score points. And um, I think at, at a real young age right now, we have all these little kids. They're, they just want to score points, you know. And then before you know it, you're looking at the scoreboard, you know, it's it's 12-2 and, you know, you're beating the number – number three, four kid in the country, because you're just out there wrestling, you know, you're not worried about, you know, am I going to win? Am I going to lose? You know, is dad going to be mad at me? Cause you know, I didn't win. So, so we've kind of taken the wins and losses out of the, the picture and kind of focused more on, on scoring points and, and wrestling hard and, and kind of being gritty. So um, I, I think that has really helped. Um, you know, I'm more of the technique guy uh, with the youth you know, Coach Van uh, really hammers down, you know, the conditioning and doing things right, and the grittiness. So at that point, I get to step back and I can just be dad, you know, so I can just go sit on the wall or, or go hide somewhere. And, and uh, you know, I'll let Coach Van get up Stevie J and, and, and get on him. So, so this way, you know, when we come home, we eat dinner. And, you know, I, I have a little policy, too, is that once we get into the car, we don't talk about wrestling. So I'll do my best to change the subject of Fortnite or, or whatever the case may be, video games, football, you know, whatever I can do to change the subject. Because, you know, I, I feel a lot of kids' careers are ruined on car rides. You know, the car ride home, you know, dad's really hammering on them, hammering on them for a two-hour car ride home. You know, that, that's not going to help. You know, it, it's just going to beat them up mentally. Um, and, uh, you're, you're much better off, you know, just fixing that in the room, the room time, the technique and, and things like that. So, 
Um, if I had any advice, you know, I would say let the car rides be the car rides and, and don't really, you know, get on your, your child, you know, on the car rides home from tournaments or practice. Well, coach, one, before, go ahead. Mike. Well, well, I have one, I have one last question where I know we have, we have short time. Um, you know, again, you've been around some of the best coaches and, and some of the best athletes and the best teammates that, you know, a generation uh, of people could be around uh, in, in, you know, a, a couple words in a sentence, a small paragraph or, or less. What's what's the best piece of advice um, that you've you've given or um, or heard um, received uh, or, or, or give out, uh, whether it's wrestling or, or life? What's the best piece of advice that you've um, that you can share with us? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think one that really sticks with me is never get out hustled, you know, so how, however you, you take that, you know, through life, I feel that no one could out hustle me, um, you know, and, and I very rarely have ever been beaten back to the middle in any of my matches against anyone I've ever wrestled. So, um, you know, I, I'm early everywhere I go. You know, I, I just think that mentality of, um, you know, hustle breaks people. That's actually my saying, um, you know, and, and I have people that are really starting to buy into that uh, mentality for sure. Well, coach, we have a couple more seconds before we close. Um, again, we appreciate your time and a couple of sentences left. What, you know, t tell, uh, talk about Binghamton one last time. What, what is Binghamton at in terms of attracting the potential recruit? Yeah, you know, we're, uh, we're in a great situation right now. You know, our, our coaching staff is all on the same page. Um, our athletes are on the same page. Our strength conditioning coach, Bill Bacon, uh, you know, he, he's a MMA wrestling guy. He's got cauliflower here. You got to love when your strength coach is, is you know, a, a combat kind of guy because he, he really gets it. Um, you know, our, our administration is phenomenal. Um, to get to this point, in the season with, you know, testing three times a week and, you know, uh, you know, tracing when kids have symptoms. And, uh, you know, we had one little shutdown early, early in the year because the school reached a hundred cases, not because we had uh, any positive cases. So, um, you know, we've been very resilient. The kids have been, you know, super resilient um, with, you know, getting their weights down and, and, and doing all the right things, being that it's such an awkward year. Um, you know, we started so late, you know, we're, we're usually wrestling in the first weekend of November and, and it, it's just very different, but um, no, no, one, there's no excuses. You know, we're, we're grinding through everything. Um, you know, I, I feel that um, I would absolutely send my son to Binghamton university um, for a bunch of reasons. One, well, last time I saw he's wearing a Rutgers gear. I don't know. Maybe we saw over the summer he became a big Rutgers fan, right? Yeah, and then he switched to Ohio State. Okay, okay. Because okay. Sammy's his yeah. boy. He likes yeah, yeah. Sammy. Yeah. And uh, yesterday, for the first time, he said Binghamton. All right. So I was I was pretty fired up about that. Well, we're, even we're even changing his mind. Okay. Well, no, I, I know you could change you, you could change his mind and, and certainly look out for, for Binghamton. You guys are on the come up. We appreciate your time. That's Steve Minich, Binghamton. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thanks, Steve. Good luck with everything. We'll be cheering for you. Take yeah. care.